Hi everybody, welcome back to my Dungeon Boss Beginner Series. This is actually going to be the series finale. This is episode 15. And the last topic that I'm going to cover is guild membership. So guild membership is an important aspect of the game in terms of uh, achieving a certain uh, set of rewards and ultimately uh, getting to that next level of the game aside from just playing it. Now at its very core this game is obviously a multiplayer game. There are other people out there and so Guild is a good chance for you to kind of uh, group together with like-minded individuals with the same goal. Some people would prefer to play with people from the same country. Your reasons for joining a guild could be numerous, but ultimately, as you progress uh, further and further in the game and get towards the end game content, the guild is what's going to ultimately keep your rewards and your currencies coming. So, once you get to level 10, I believe, you have the option to join a guild, which uh, in my case, I have a guild tab over here. And what you can do is you can go into the guilds. When you first open this up, you'll see a thing that says uh, create guild or join a guild. And that will allow you to browse for a guild uh, if you want to. Now, joining a guild very early on is um, not going to be the most beneficial for you. Obviously, if you find a lax guild out there that uh, will accept any new member, it's just a public guild, you can uh, sort of reap the rewards of other people's uh, success, but uh, most of the time, once you get up to some of these guilds that uh, have 49 or 50 people in them, they're looking for specific uh, player levels. They want people that can complete X number of crowns. Um, so if we just look at our general chat, it's quite frequently that we see people spamming for um, rosters in here and people looking for other people. I don't see any immediate ones, but uh, they happen uh, hundreds of times per day. You'll see people in chat saying, go ahead and uh, join us for such and such, need to do X number of crowns. So if you're new to the game and are looking into getting into a guild, um, it is called a guild, not a clan, not uh, anything else. So if you're brand new, you're looking for the conversations that uh, start with guild when you're looking in the chat. So when people say that they require X number of crowns, what they're referring to is once you join a guild, you get these guild quests. Every day you get three of them and they're worth the uh, crowns. So you can see the reward is 10 crowns for completing the first one, 10 for the second, and 10 for the third. So you can earn 30 crowns per day and so each person in the guild can earn 30 crowns per day and that goes on for an entire week so if all 50 earn all 30 of them every single day the entire guild gets a grand total of 10,500 crowns and that ranks them up uh, up and down on the leaderboard so that's the absolute maximum you can get um, and then the quests here are ultimately what are going to change so if you're looking at getting into a guild, a lot of people can usually get at least uh, 10 of the crowns per day. And that's because almost everybody is always going to have something like this one here, Fate of the Zeta. It is a basically a kill-based quest, which means you're going to have to go out and hunt various uh, types of enemies, whether they be beasts, monsters, spirits, uh, uh, gelatins, whatever it might be. Um, in my case, because I'm very late in the game, at the very end, uh, I have to hunt Zeta Warriors and kill 12 of them. This one here, pretty much everybody gets one of these per day, and almost everybody can get uh, 10 crowns per day then. So even if you're brand new to the game, um, you should be able to get to a point where you can earn 70 crowns per week. And you might even see some guild saying, we're looking for people that can achieve 70 crowns per week, or maybe 100, just to take it to that next step. And so ultimately what these do, when we go out to our guild menu, like I said, these are for your leaderboard. So if we look at the leaderboard, we can see the guild crowns earned. And then ultimately out here, you're looking at the rewards. So the purpose of joining a guild is so you can cash in on these rewards. Now, I wouldn't expect to get into a top tier guild that's going to crack the top uh, 10 here, however many uh, you're looking at getting, until you're very, very late in the game, probably level 65 or higher. And that's just because some of the quests are harder than others. Uh, for people that are just level 10, you're going to have a hard time beating the Tower of Ponage quest, and actually you probably won't even get those because your tower won't be open. 
but uh, for a lot of uh, mid-level players, getting past the level 7 and level 10 of the tower quest is uh, really difficult. So it's hard for them to commit to a full 210 trophies per week. It's just not feasible for some levels. Um, and even then, some of the other ones are, are difficult as well. So what they do is they say, well, we're requiring 100 trophies per week. If you have 100 trophies per week and you have your entire guild filled with 50 people, that's basically 5,000 total trophies. So what that's going to earn you then is if you can achieve 5,000 total trophies, you want to scroll through here until you can find something that uh, hits your level. So if you can earn 5,000 trophies per week, you're going to get some gems, you're going to get some stamina, and you're going to get some tokens, and you'll get some raid tickets. And these values only go up as you get uh, further along. So the best guilds uh, are obviously going to get uh, a maximum amount. So now this isn't a true ranking system. Um, any number of guilds can get ranked number one. So if you get the maximum number of crowns, you get tied for first place. That's just how it goes. Every guild after that uh, does not get uh, ranked down by dozens and dozens. They'll just get the number two rank and so on and so forth. So the actual hero token in here will change uh, from time to time. Usually it's on about a, I would say about a two month rotation. So right now we have uh, Hagram tokens in here, which uh, a lot of uh, my guild and, and other elite players are thinking that it's absolutely worthless. Uh, personally, I think there's going to be a serious dwarf buff coming and I'm, I'm anticipating uh, a strong dwarf team is going to be on its way uh, with maybe a little bit of reworking. One of the things that I wanted to mention in here is uh, the reason that people used to want to get to the top 10 guilds, which is the what you're going to see for the rewards here, which is just above 10,000. If you can get to the top 10, um, there's a ton of gems available. These used to be actually heroic summons. Um, so if you're new to the game, you're never going to experience that again. But basically what it amounted to was people getting sort of freebies when that was kind of an unintended side effect after they morphed the game into uh, um, basically a new era. And that era was basically rune crafting. Um, so if you're familiar with the runes, essentially that's a good gem sync for you. And what was happening is instead of people spending their gems on heroic summons or even the times 10 summons, they had banked tons and tons and tons of these uh, from their guilds. And I, at one point, had probably saved uh, probably three times ten summons worth of, of summons. And so at the number one guild spot, we used to get five heroic summons per. So every two weeks, you'd have a times ten summon. So over the course of six weeks, I saved every one. And then a new hero comes out, and you're able to use three of those times 10 summons and get all those free tokens so you have some people that are in really high performing guilds that are banking these summons over and over and over and over and over and then a brand new hero comes out and then boom they're six starred without even trying and the developers are noticing things like that so what they do is they say well why don't we give a gem bonus instead because now these gems aren't just for heroic summons and vip summons they're actually going to go for rune costs as well and they'll find that people are going to be spending more of these than if they were um, just doing the summons the only gripe that i have about this is they did not uh, make it equivalent uh, substitution because we used to get five heroic summons, that's basically the equivalent of 1,500 gems. And we're only getting 1,100, which is kind of a, a bummer. Now, they did throw in um, raid tickets. To get 12 raid tickets, that actually will add uh, a couple hundred more gems on here. So it turns out to be probably close to 1,500 total gems. But it's just they didn't give you the full gems for it and said, well, we're going to give you some raid tickets and this. And the overall value is roughly the same. But... Um, that's how that's kind of changed. So the other benefits of joining a guild, obviously the, the rewards are first and foremost what you're going to be trying to go for. So if you can get yourself into a 8, 9, or even 10,000 guild at some point, uh, that's going to be your ultimate goal. Um, if you're lucky, you can get into one of those uh, top tier guilds that finishes top 1, 2, 3. Um, but uh, it's going to be challenging to get into those uh, without some serious uh, hero roster and power behind you. So one of the other things that uh, you can use a guild for, and I recommend this for all new players, even if, even if your guild is, is absolutely terrible and you only have five of you in it, um, it's still better than nothing. And what you can use it for is your chat menu. So you can go into the guild here, and it might be something like, 
most of it's going to be filled with the uh, little things here that says, uh, you know, what's actually going on um, from the guild master if there's notes or anything like that. But you can use guild chats to say something like, how can we beat this team? So something like this is something you might see now. Anyone have a team to beat Koros, for example? And guild members will often be more friendly um, to fellow guild members than they will to general chat. And general chat seems to be kind of a, a wasteland uh, when it comes to asking for help, which is part of the reason I developed this series. So a lot of times you can share information with your guild in terms of how to beat certain dungeons. We see that a lot with uh, individual events. If you're having trouble getting through a particular dungeon, like a, a hard or a very hard dungeon, they can suggest teams for you. Uh, it saves you the hassle of going out to the forums. They can also help you get through uh, just various uh, event quests that you maybe that don't know what to actually do. Um, so. It doesn't have anything as far as friend heroes as a benefit, but a lot of people will add their individual guild members. You can see I have a, a few Justice League people out here as my friends, so a lot of people will find guild members as their friends as well. So overall, it's a great place to join uh, a small community and get uh, assistance in the game as you're progressing. A lot of the best guilds will have counterpart guilds that uh, are, are sort of starter guilds because obviously not everybody can just jump right into a max uh, tier guild. But uh, a lot of the best guilds will have uh, lower guilds where you can kind of start out and get your feet wet. And as you progress, maybe they move you up to a little bit better one. You start getting better and better rewards, which is really why I suggest uh, trying to find a guild early on. You'll be, uh, once you get to the point where you know you can finish the number of quests, if you can get all 210 crowns per week, you're going to have a lot better uh, um, pick as far as uh, what guilds to join. And you will see people requesting uh, membership uh, all over the place. So if you see somebody spamming for it and you can meet the crown requirements for it, definitely uh, take a look at it and see if it's a good fit for you and, and hopefully reap the rewards. So... There's not really much else we can talk about as far as guilds go, so what I'd like to uh, just mention at this point here, um, again, this is the last episode of my Dungeon Boss Beginner Series. Um, for those of you that stuck around for the entire series, I do thank you. Um, the whole purpose of this is to help out new players and uh, just help them get a foothold in the game. So... What I'm looking at doing with this particular series now that it's wrapped up, I would actually like to morph this into a frequently asked question instead. So this this particular series is going to finish, but I'm actually going to start a new one, and I'm just going to take uh, random questions from users. These might be um, very much beginner questions. They might be intermediate questions. They might be advanced questions. Um, but as I start getting requests for specific types of uh, things like that as an FAQ format, I'll actually uh, post videos on those instead. Um, so that'll kind of keep the uh, the questions going rather than just uh, covering the topics that I did that might be, uh, you know, kind of here or there, or just maybe not including everything that uh, that you want. So anybody that has questions, uh, I do uh, always uh, look forward to the comments and such. You can always send me a direct message if you like, um, but uh, keep those questions coming and I'll keep uh, posting responses. So until next time, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again. Thanks.